Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy sealed products and singles directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Standard Game the video. Today we're taking a look at a Jeskai colored control deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, built around Hinata, Dawn Crowned from Kamigawa Neon Dynasty, a 4 mana 4 4 legendary Kirin Spirit with Flying and Trample, saying spells you cast cost 1 generic mana less to cast for each target, and spells your opponents cast cost 1 generic mana more to cast for each target. So a pretty good creature individually, but it becomes insane when combined with cards like Magma Opus, which typically costs 8 mana for an instant, dealing 4 damage divided as we choose among any number of targets, we get to tap 2 target permanents, create a 4-4 blue and red elemental creature token, and we get to draw 2 cards, so a very powerful effect that's fairly costed at 8 mana, but with Hinata in play we can pretty routinely cast Magma Opus for just 2 mana, just a blue and a red, as we can pretty easily divide the 4 damage among four different targets, as we can always target ourselves or our creatures in a pinch if we need to reduce the cost. So for two mana, Magma Opus becomes quite the steal. Then another great combo is Inscription of Insight. A four mana sorcery can be kicked for four additional mana, in which case we can choose all three modes instead of just one, between returning up to two target creatures to their owner's hands, scry two then draw two, and target player creates an XX blue illusion creature token, where X is the number of cards in their hand after drawing the two cards potentially. So with Hinata in play we can play Kicked Inscription for just five mana, as we can potentially select three different targets between the two creatures and the player, which also counts as a separate target, so another great combo with Hinata. And then we also have two copies of Crackle with Power as a potential finisher, Triple X and Double Red for a Mythic Rare Sorcery, dealing five times X damage to each of up to X targets. So with Hinata in play we can essentially remove one X from the casting cost, and at that point it is four mana to deal five damage to one target, six mana to deal ten damage to two targets, and eight mana to deal fifteen damage to three targets, and that also keeps scaling up. So a very nice finisher that can potentially just burn the opponent out. And then other great combos include Shatter Skull Smashing, which can also be played as a land, or deal 6 damage divided as we choose among potentially 2 target creatures and or planeswalkers, so it can also get a 2 mana discount. Another great one that didn't make the final cut is Meteor Swarm, which can also potentially get a nice mana reduction thanks to Hinata, so there's a lot of cool cards to mess around with. And then rounding out the deck, we also have some spot removal with two copies of Sanctify, which can destroy an artifact or enchantment and gain three life, as there's quite a few artifacts and enchantments in standard nowadays. We've got a braid, can deal three damage to a creature or destroy an artifact. Then Cinderclasm is a sweeper, we can potentially kick for an additional red mana to deal two damage to each creature instead of one damage. And then Expressive Iteration, a card we typically want to play on turn three to generate a nice two for one. And then Search for Glory, a 2 mana snow sorcery, lets us search our library for a snow permanent card, a legendary card, or a saga card, reveal it and put it into our hands, and we also gain one life for each snow mana spent to cast it. We only have one of each snow land in the deck, so not very likely to gain a ton of life, but it is a way for us to find Hinata as a legendary creature, and can also potentially find one of our lands, including the legendary lands from Kamigawa, like a Gancho that can be channeled to deal 4 damage to target attacking or blocking creatures, can also get a 1 mana discount if we control Hinata as a legendary creature, and then the Soaring City can bounce target creature, artifact, enchantment or planeswalker back, and also gets a discount for a legendary creature. And then two copies of Prismari Command, which is also very flexible, can deal two damage to any target, can let us draw two cards and then discard two cards, can make a treasure token or destroy target artifact, so it can also typically be cast for two mana with Hinata in play. And then a mana base, we've got plenty of lands since we don't really want to miss any land drops. And then we've got some utility lands with a legendary lands we just covered, and one copy of Hall of the Storm Giants as potentially an extra win condition. One of each basic lands, and of course snow basics to go with Search for Glory. And then a couple dual lands with Deserted Beach times two, four Storm Carved Coast, two Sundown Pass, and then all 12 pathways in our colors as well. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the play, and we've got Hinata and some interaction, so I'll keep. Probably fine to play a Smashing Tap here as our only red source at the moment. Magma Opus, we could already discard to play turn 3 Hinata, but probably want to keep it as a spell to actually cast. So for now, probably want more blue mana as opposed to white. 
Keep up Cinder Clasm. Put on blue whites. And Ingenious Smith, we can Cinder Clasm away before it picks up any plus one counters. Finds a Mnemonic Sphere. So next turn we can play Hinata. Opponent's going to pass with three mana up, which probably represents the Cramp as a potential counter spell. So we could just go for an inscription, scry to draw two, maybe get that countered, and then try and resolve Hinata next turn. Opponent took the bait, channels Mirror Shell Cramp to counter it. And hopefully we get to resolve Hinata now. Celestus into Sphere. And then I can even abrade if I had the red mana, which I sadly don't. Still go for blue, so we have triple blue for a kicked insight next turn, hopefully. And yeah, we just need Hinata to survive here. And then we've got a ton of powerful options available. Sphere to draw to. Opponent is probably playing Doomscar, which they cannot cast at the moment at least. So Inscription is not going to be able to be kicked pretty easily since their opponent has no targets. Magma Opus I can still cast for 3 mana if I'm willing to target myself. And then we have a braid for Celestus potentially, or we can wait and see if they play a more powerful artifact. Either way, this can be played for reds. We can attack. And Magma Opus we can play at instant speed. Uh -huh, opponent's gonna try and deal damage to Hinata. Not before we get to Magma Opus here. So, one, two, three. And tap two things. I guess we could have main phased this to play around Iganjo. But that's okay. So, two damage to our opponents. Find another Magma Opus, which I can go ahead and cast. So, once again, the same dance here can target my token as well now. And then tap two things down. Alright, we cast double Magma Opus. Not bad. Hinata down, sadly. But we got to draw four cards. We've got a backup Hinata. And two 4-4 four, four tokens, which your opponent's going to have to answer with potentially a Doomscar. It's going to be a portable hole. Pretty nice answer to tokens. Double portable hole. Fair enough. Now I can play Hinata and pay for a potential Mirror Shell Crab, making us uh, pay three additional mana. So, play Hinata, step one. And then I could destroy Celestus here. Could wait and see if they play more threatening artifact. Which is probably okay too. Can even go for Treasure Vault if we wanted to. Another Treasure Vault. Point's gonna loot with the Celestus. So, I guess that happens. Opponent's still digging for answers. Gets rid of a land. So they probably don't have a backup Celestus in hand since they haven't discarded one. So now I feel better about potentially destroying it. Although I kind of want to destroy the Treasure Vault as well here. Maybe take away one mana. Right, opponent's gonna bounce Hinata. And in response, we can destroy Celestus too. Alright. 
So if I play Hinata and tap my mana carefully, do we want to maybe go for an Inscription too? Can play Inscription, but without Kicker. So yeah, I guess it's fine to just play Hinata and pass. And then if they answer Hinata, we can just play this Kicked for 8 mana. So your opponent making good use of the legendary lanes. Ingenious Smith gives us a target for inscription, although bouncing it is not the best value proposition. Opponent finds a backup Celestis. And a bank buster. Alright, that's something I would have liked to abrade, which is why I wanted to be patient. But so it goes. Backup Hinata. So probably fine to play this kicked now. Bouncing Smith. And making a token before playing my land, so I get to make a bigger token. Probably don't need more Hinatas at this point. Alright, so we've got some nice pressure in play. Iteration to find more cards, maybe find a Crackle with power to end the game. Sphere can draw two. But once again, they won't be able to Doomscar. So there's our Smith again. Finds Portable Hole to answer my token. Only one left in their deck. Yeah, looking at our deck list, you wouldn't think Portable Hole was particularly powerful, but turns out we have a lot of tokens. Okay, so how do we want to kick things off? Probably with a Magma Opus. And then I guess I can target Hinata for a discount, which could be relevant over one extra damage here. And then tap two things. And we'll deal two damage to the Smith. Find another iteration, which we can cast. Finding Crackle with power, which we'll put in hand. And we can cast the Abrade right now, destroying the Bank Buster. Attack for four, and then next turn Crackle with power. Should be game over. We'll save the iteration for another time, maybe. In case something bad happens to our Crackle. There's a Doomscar. Now Crackle's a little bit more expensive. So we might want to replay Hinata first. So let's see, how much mana do we have? We've got 6, 10, 11. So 11 mana still casts a Crackle for 3, which is 15 damage. And I don't think for two mana our opponent has any interaction. Up to three targets, but one is enough. And there we have it. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. We've got Cinderclasm for early aggressive decks. Then iteration can be played on turn 3. Help me find lands for Hinata, plus additional expensive spells like Magma Opus and Inscription. And now we've got the double red to maybe kick a Cinderclasm. Right, Kami of Transience. So that could get a counter here, so it's out of range from our kicked Cinderclasm. Restoration puts a counter on it. So next we're most likely just gonna cast Iteration. Although that does mean discarding to hand size. So I could wait and just keep up Kicked Cinderclasm in case a smaller creature shows up. Then play Hinata. Or I can Iteration anyways just to 
try and find some expensive spell to play after we resolve Hinata, hopefully. Right, inscription's a good one. And then one Cinderclasm could go. Don't see myself casting two in the same turn. Opponent gets back the Weaver with their own restoration. So now enchantment creatures get plus one plus one. And a wedding announcement. Alright. So kicked Cinderclasm could still be good. Probably still wanna prioritize playing Hinata. And then next turn, hopefully, the kicked inscription can catch us back up. So hoping to dodge removal. Right. Jugan defends the temple, makes a monk. So the board is ripe for a magma opus over the top. Opponent gets two monks thanks to the weaver copying the ability. Cinderclasm can still deal with all the one ones. Alrighty, so yeah, kicked inscription still seems like the play. And then I can bounce Weaver and Kami, so they don't get to double the plus one counters next turn. Am I still dead next turn? Not on board at least. I might have to chump Architect, although I guess I'll have a, another token here too, so I think we'll be okay. So bounce Kami, bounce either Architect or Weaver. I think Weaver is still the pick because of the Saga in play. And then a Magma Opus I'll gladly keep. So if we can survive next turn we should be able to take over. Naturalist to discount enchantments. Opponent will get to transform wedding announcements to pump their team, so the Cinderclasm is not going to be quite as effective. Ooh, Reign of Truth. Can pump one of their creatures by quite a bit. And the 11-12 Architect. Well, that's getting chumped by the Illusion. Announcement makes a token, transforms. Okay. So definitely gonna need more red mana. And then can play Magma Opus for two, kick Cinderclasm for three, which would deal with all the 2-2 two -two creatures. Um, could also do this in the opponent's turn. So we can potentially tap two things down as well like their lands or the architect. So maybe that's better. Um, yeah, I could see that. So how about we just pass? Probably still need to keep Hinata back to be safe. And then I can wait for the Saga triggers to decide where to tap stuff down and potentially respond. Opponent can copy one of their triggers as well. No, they're gonna copy that one. And what are we targeting? They're targeting Naturalists, so that one we can tap down. And Weaver, which they weirdly targeted as well. Jugam transforms. And our opponent wants to move to combat, so now we can Magma Opus. So, where to deal damage? So this one 
is getting pumped by this as well as Weaver because it's an enchantment. So I guess I could deal two damage here, one here, one to their face. And that's going to cost me three mana for Magma Opus, and then I can still play Kick Cinderclasm, Tap, Naturalist, and Architect. And then two here. Make sure to keep up double reds. And then Kick Cinderclasm looks good. Opponent playing a Kami. Uh, sure. I thought we were already in the middle of combat. I guess we want to maybe respond to kill the remnant so they can't pump the Kami. Alright, so those are gone. Opponent gets their Kami. Get to untap, and now we should be able to take over. Sanctify either Restoration or Naturalists. Can bounce some stuff and start attacking. Maybe start with a kick description again. So my illusion's bigger. And then what to bounce? Uh, maybe Weaver and Kami. Smashing I could keep. And then I can Sanctify Architect for one mana. And Abrade the Naturalist for one mana. And our opponent has seen enough. Awesome. So managed to stabilize just in time here. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. And what do I think of this hand? We've got Search for Glory to find Hinata. Inscription to go with it. Already double blue. And then some early interaction. So yeah. This hand's keepable. Usher, we can upgrade. And I guess we can wait to see if they maybe play an Aspirant we want to kill instead. If not, I'm happy killing Usher. It's going to be an Adversary instead. Cinderclasm. I can play Unkicked just to deal with Adversary. One potential issue is something like Adeline showing up and making a token right away if we let them keep the adversary. Um, I also don't have the fourth land yet, so if I search for Hinata, that doesn't necessarily help me if I can't play it on the following turn. So maybe I should try and interact a little bit more. And then I'll keep up Cinderclasm. I might take three and then see if they play another one toughness creature, we can Cinderclasm away. Like a Spellbinder. So, in response, Cinderclasm. And then I imagine I'll exile the inscription to make that more expensive. Can always search for glory for land if we really want to. Our deck is playing, I think, 30 lands total if you count the dual faced cards. So, pretty likely to hit here. Probably not a ton of targets for Sanctify in this matchup, maybe some equipment or. Paladin class as an enchantment. Opponent actually exiles a braid. Alright, lands means I'm happily gonna search for glory Hinata. And then... What's next? Do I want triple blue for insight or double reds? I think triple blue is still more important. A Legion Angel is a good one. Although we're happy playing a grindy game here, so I'm not too concerned. So play Hinata. Don't expect it to be removed. Take four. And Inscription is a pretty decent answer if we can bounce double Angel here. Right, find another Braid instead. So Braid I can play for three mana to kill an Angel. Which is not ideal. I could also search for glory, get a land, and then a braid from hand instead. 
just to keep developing my mana so I can play Kick Inscription next turn. Seems fine. And then get a Snow-Covered Mountain. And then I can kill the Angel that could block, since I don't want to block their Legion Angel, so I might as well attack for four. And then next turn we can play the full value Inscription of Insight, hopefully, if there's no Spellbinder to mess up our plans. And if there is, we can just abrade the Legion Angel, keep Hinata back on defense, and try again next turn. So would love for them to just replay Legion Angel. So five mana, down to nine. And it's going to be a Brutal Cathar to Exile Hinata instead. All right. And an Adversary. So the pressure is on. Magma Opus. I wouldn't be able to cast here, sadly. Although we were very close, actually. I can kill Brutal Cathar, get Hinata back. Hope to be able to block Adversary, take another four from Legion Angel, and then next turn Magma Opus to stabilize. Alternatively, I could Inscription to just bounce two creatures. Uh, let's say bounce Legion Angel and Adversary. Then we have to worry about an Adversary later pumping their team. And then we don't get our Hinata back, so that seems bad. So, yeah, I think a Braid Cathar before it transforms back. Get Hinata back It's probably fine, and then we could be dead to a combination of removal and pump spells. Not sure why Inscription's glowing, since, yeah, we can't play it for just one mana, even if we bounce two creatures. I guess it's maybe because of the kicker and the third target. Right, Aspirants can pump Adversary, so they have a profitable attack. But we're still at one, which is not dead. And this Magma Opus should be able to stabilize us nicely. Okay. So this is a rub your hands together moment. So how do we want to sequence? I could Magma Opus in the opponent's turn, killing, let's say, the adversary aspirants one to my opponent. And then I can tap Legion Angel and a land. And that's going to cost me three mana, leaving two for command. I guess I can even kill the Legion Angel if we deal one with Opus and two more with command. So, I kind of like tapping their lands in that case. And then Hinata should be able to attack. Sure. So, upkeep. Magma Opus. We'll go one, two, one. Tap two lands. Ooh, opponent's gonna try and make something indestructible here. Alright, fair enough, not something I was expecting. So we can wait to see what they target and then try and prismatic command in response, although they can target their own Legion Angel, which has flying. Although they might go for Adversary here, which is the hope, because now we can actually block with uh, the token on the ground. So they should have gone for Legion Angel, but I understand why they did it this way. So two damage, and then I guess if I make a treasure, I could still potentially find an abrade of the Magma Opus and cast it. So target Legion Angel, make a treasure. All right, so I won't be able to abrade here, so I will be forced to chump the adversary. So maybe good punished for going for the instant speed Magma Opus. Oof, and a portable hole gets rid of my token. All right, fair enough. So, opponent found a way around the uh, combat line here, maybe got a little bit greedy with both the attack and the instant speed opus, but that's how you learn about new cards in the format. Kyodai got us pretty good. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play, and yeah, this hand seems keepable. Might be even a hand where I consider making a treasure on turn two to play Hinata ahead of schedule, since we have double inscription to leverage afterwards. Although I wouldn't be able to necessarily kick it 
if I have to use a treasure to play Hinata. So we'll see what the next couple turns look like. Opponent's playing a green deck. Yeah, I think I'm okay with using Magma Opus for treasure. Just to kind of get a head start. Pack leader. I guess the concern is potential Blizzard Brawl, which they could cast and pay for Hinata, and with a third Snowland would kill it. But that's not gonna change, so. Waiting doesn't necessarily help if I don't have instant speed removal available. So sure, play Hinata and cross our fingers that there's no Blizzard Brawl. And if there is at least no third snow lands, so it's at least a trade. Pack leader attacks. Maybe a snakeskin veil is what they had. Alright, sculpture. So we're in the clear. And I don't actually mind playing inscription just to bounce two things now to make sure the opponent doesn't snowball their board presence too much, since we have a backup inscription for next turn. And uh, yeah, I wouldn't be able to play it kicked here, sadly, one mana short. So let's just return two creatures. And hit for four. And then next turn we can play it kicked, hoping that they just play two more creatures out. Perfect. And our opponent is just going to fall further and further behind. Prismari command seems acceptable. Can maybe loot away the search for glory. Find more action. Sir points at 12. I've got more card draw and removal in hand. So luckily dodged that early blizzard brawl. And yeah, opponent has seen enough. Hinata just too strong. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. And yeah, we've got a keepable hand, assuming we can hit a couple land drops, which should be feasible in a deck essentially playing 30 lands. And we can always search for glory for land 4, since we already have Hinata. Got a bit of removal for enchantments and artifacts and creatures. And there's our land. Opponent fetching a mountain. Blue-red. Alright, don't feel bad about Search for Glory for land. Could also get a Legendary land. And then probably make it a blue source, so I can kick Inscription more easily. So I guess Soaring City is fine here. Alright, let's see what our opponent is up to. Just blue-red. And a Cacophony. Alright, so mill deck. At least Magma Opus costs 8 mana, so it's pretty good against the Tasha Sidious Laughter. And we've got a Hinata in place, so... That's where we want to be. Next turn we can Magma Opus, potentially. And start applying pressure. For mana, opponent could have an unexpected windfall here. We can attack and then Magma Opus at instant speed, maybe in response to the windfall. Thing that beats Inscription, which we won't be able to kick that easily with no creatures in play. Right, so in response, we'll Magma Opus so it doesn't get countered. And then... I guess I don't even have to target myself. Could also, I guess, tap two lands down on the opponent's upkeep instead. Maybe that's still okay. Yeah, actually, let's do that instead. 
so they can have their two treasures. And then we can tap two lands down here. Could maybe target myself for one damage to play around Jory Disruption. It's maybe worth it. And then two lands. So three to them, one to me. And now we can pay for Jory Disruption. And that worked, so we denied them two mana this turn, which is a big deal. Did not want to target Hinata with one damage in case they have three damage removal spells. And there's a Rune Crab, which we can deal with. At least bounce it temporarily. Crackle with power would have been nice. Still one left in the deck. Search for Glory could get the author legendary land as well. Ooh, iteration. Opponent gonna copy Cacophony here, maybe? Yep. Does say each opponent, so it doesn't target. So gets around Hinata. Alright, so we're down to 19 cards. That's pretty scary. Makes me not necessarily want to draw with the inscription. So what's my plan? What's left in the deck, maybe? Still have a Crackle left, I believe. So that could deal 5 damage to the opponent for 4 mana. Although I don't see me dealing with a Crab and drawing into it at the same time. Yeah, if I go Iteration, I won't have enough red mana to draw into Crackle and cast it. This could be still an Inscription Kicked situation. Which will draw two cards, but then we'll present lethal next turn. Yeah, sure. Bounce this. And then can bottom both. Attack for eight. Alright, points at five, so I'm assuming they're dead next turn. 16 cards left in library, so double hideous laughter could get there. It's gonna be a Ruin Crab. Plus a lands. 13 left. Another double cacophony would do it. Alright, iteration plus cacophony. Looks like what's happening here. Yeah, that's unfortunate. The draw two from uh, my inscription didn't make a difference. But opponent with a triple cacophony got the job done. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Some early interaction with a braid into Hinata. Can afford to play one tapped here. Opponent's mono black so far. And then ideally we have blue in play in case we draw Iteration, which means playing the Soaring City, that's fine. In case I want to braid as well here. Shambling Ghasts, that's fine. No need to braid that one. And then also no need to smashing it. Now against mono black, can expect Hinata to be answered pretty quickly. So, could try and wait until we can play Hinata and get some immediate value. Opportunist will happily kill. Alright, now that we have a backup, I have no qualms about playing out our legend. And then still waiting for one of our big payoffs, whether it's Inscription or Magma Opus. Do need a third blue source for a kicked Inscription as well. I'll take it so we don't lose Hinata to a uh, Meat Hook Massacre. They can still go for it and then minus one, minus one, but at least they won't get a treasure. So it's something. Alright, time for backup Hinata.
And then I'll happily draw some of our expensive card draw spells. Search for Glory could get the author a legendary land. Probably better to keep it for another Hinata. And then for now, I guess a problem with killing the Midnight Sky is that they can get my Hinata back. Which sort of defeats the purpose of having a Hinata in play. So yeah, that's kind of a problem. Hopefully we can find a bounce spell for it soon. And then for now, just search for glory, a backup Hinata. Gaining one life with our Snowland. Since, yeah, I'm, I guess we could get to Seed of the Empire as an answer to our own Hinata. That seems medium. So we're going to take a bit of a beating. Until we can start drawing some of our curve toppers. Trespasser. I hope XLC Nata. Alright, they just made their own Midnight Sky Wars. So now smashing looks a lot better. And uh, got the triple blue as well. This ward makes us discard a card, can get rid of Pathway. Although, let's see, if I target their two creatures, three, four, five, I guess we're one short of killing both. So maybe for now just kill Midnight Sky. And then if they make me discard two, it's kind of interesting what to get rid of. But I guess we can keep back up Hinata still. Yeah, it seems fine. So X equals 5. They could also get back their Shambling Ghasts. Right, deadly Dispute to sack it. That works. They can get back their own Dragon, luckily. So opponent can get back Shambling Gas or make me discard two. So yeah, I think we hang on to Hinata. For now, our 4-4 four, four blocks Trespasser just fine. And then Magma Opus and Inscription is what we want to see. Crackle with Power would also be powerful. Another Dispute sacking the Treasure. So your opponent's probably playing Invoke Despair, one of the payoffs for being mono-black. Soren's pretty good too. Uh, iterations, promising. And Cinderclasm, not quite as good as I would like it to be. Although I can combine Prismari Command with the Cinderclasm. Or Prismari Command could go looting. I could kill Sorin with it, draw to discard two, and hopefully find something powerful. And then uh, I guess I can just play the pathway, or keep the pathway in hand to potentially discard two command. Yeah, that seems slightly better. Alright, there's my inscription, although can't kick it right now. I think I still hang on to Hinata plus inscription and then hope to survive the next turn. And then, yeah, kicked inscription could maybe carry us to victory. Could also discard Hinata, so I can potentially play kicked inscription if the Hinata in play dies. Which is also reasonable. Alright, sure. And then uh, probably fine to keep the land in hand still, or do I? I can play it. I might need the man afterwards to cast another spell. So really crossing my fingers that Hinata survives. Hive can attack, that's fine. Opponent sends a team. So 
So there's no immediate danger of a shambling gas giving Hinata minus one, minus one, so I'll block the trespasser, I guess. Opponent hoping to steal the game with Hive next turn. Night Witch and a shambling gas, that's fine. Ooh, and a magma opus, okay. So now we're talking. Now there's still a Meat Hook Massacre to be worried about. So Inscription can bounce, let's say, Eye Twitch and the Vampire. Can start there. And then we can still Magma Opus. And a Crackle with Power seems like a good leftover here. Can play this. And then I can use Magma Opus to tap down Hive. As well as Shambling Ghasts. And then Hinata can probably attack. And then do I upkeep one to tap down Hive or make them spend the mana? I think we make them spend the mana. Opponent goes for it. So before it turns into a creature I might want to tap it down. And then Magma Opus has to target the opponent plus maybe my token here since I don't want to kill the ghasts. Tap Hive, tap Shambling Ghasts, and three to my opponents. They're gonna float it for mana. And then a Crackle with Powers, hoping to close out the game next turn. There's an Eye Twitch. Opponent passes. Alright, let's count up our mana. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So we can crackle for x equals 4 as long as I target 4 different things. Now we have to be careful with the Meat Hook Massacre, but if I deal 20 damage to my opponent, they will be dead before the Meat Hook Massacre would have a chance to trigger and kill me as well. So yeah, we can go for a crackle for 20 damage. Seems like a cool way to end this game. And so we can target our opponents. Shambling Gas, I Twitch, take out our 3 3 token in the process too. There's other ways we could do this, but uh, Crackle for 20 seems stylish. Awesome, sweet. So, got to see our Jeskai Hinata deck in action. And yeah, the deck seems to be putting up some results already. I've seen some tournament results playing Hinata in various Jeskai control decks. Maybe not pushing these synergies quite as far as we did today, but it goes to show that the uh, deck is quite promising and uh, we'll have some legs in competitive standard. So overall, quite happy with how the deck performed today. The games we lost were incredibly close and the deck still felt very good, even if we ended up falling a little bit short. So I can definitely recommend the deck, and you can always watch out for tournament results to see potential upgraded versions of the deck, maybe playing cards like Goldspan Dragon as well, as of course one of the best cards in standard. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day! I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.